Uh, welcome to our presentation today. Very glad for your time. Today our topic is private LTE or PCN, bridging the digital divide. Now, what do we mean by digital divide? Uh, this is a very education focused term and it simply means the gap between kids that have equitable and readily available internet access and those that do not. So for our education customers on the call today, welcome. We hope that this is an informative webinar for you. I am Reed Perryman, Director of Public Sector Sales. Mark referenced that earlier. Mark, I think that's when your audio went out on me a little bit, so apologies if I'm retreading ground. Exciting to be with you all today. And to cover our agenda today, uh, four easy parts. We're going to do a PCN or private cellular network overview. We are going to have a PCN for education focus section. We're going to slide into what can you do today in terms of learning more about PCN and what that could mean for your school district, your agency, uh, and more. Lastly, we'll wrap up with a Q&A. If you do have questions during the presentation, by all means, please put them into the chat that is available uh, there on the left-hand side of the console. So uh, I see that Mark has already dropped that in to the chat. So uh, if you have questions as you go, drop them to the chat. We'll cover them in part four of our presentation today. So now we're going to go into section one. We'll dive in with a PCN, Private Cellular Network Overview. We're going to talk about the definition of private cellular networks, the benefits of private cellular networks, specifically for uh, education agencies out there. And we'll talk a little bit about the architecture and how it works at an ecosystem level, say, versus a public carrier such as Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. First things first, what is private cellular networks? It can be defined very simply. Think of it this way. You have public wireless carriers out there, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon that are offering their service off of their cellular tower and microcell infrastructures using any number of their supported LTE uh, frequency bands today. And they are authorizing you as an end user that has a cell phone, maybe a cellular enabled router, maybe a cellular enabled laptop to access their network for a public fee. Now, the big issue here is that it's public network access, meaning consumers are on it, businesses are on it, and oftentimes that lends itself to great congestion and capacity issues along with latency and jitter. So what PCN does for the end user is it allows you to acquire licensing to access a very specific cellular spectrum between uh, 3,550 megahertz and 3,700 megahertz and effectively create your own wireless carrier cellular network that you control at the end user level, meaning that's going to offer you an unparalleled amount of benefits versus going with one of the public carrier operators today. Um, so essentially, what is it? It is a way to build your own cellular network that is for you, by you, and controlled and managed by you at the agency level. So what benefits does PCN offer? If that's what PCN looks like, what benefits does it offer? Well, we touched on a few in the definition. One of the big benefits to PCN is the coverage. So let's stack this against traditional Wi-Fi networks. So when we're talking about perhaps a school district campus or a small college campus, and we're specifically looking at enterprise Wi-Fi through a series of access points, which is the common way to get a wireless LAN that blankets your campus today, uh, Wi-Fi only goes so far. And so it's really hard to reach some of those outlying areas on your campus, perhaps out in a parking lot, perhaps out in a sports field, which in turn really hampers a school district's ability, an agency's ability to support any number of applications up to uh, athletic streaming, or it could be pop-up events out there in the parking lot or at another sporting event field. And the list goes on and on. So enterprise level Wi-Fi is extremely stymied by the distance that it can cover 
primarily riding on the five gigahertz channel today, which is a very heavy wavelength that is low propagating and things like buildings and trees can really reduce its efficacy. So with PCN riding on that 3550 megahertz to 3700 megahertz, it often covers uh, twice, if not more, the area that enterprise level Wi-Fi today, in fact, it's very comparable uh, to a lot of what the carriers offer on their higher LTE bands and some of their mid-band 5G. Uh, capacity wise, remember, this is an entirely private network. It's entirely segregated from the public in large that are riding on AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile today. What this means is that you have specific control access to allow devices at an individual level or a group level onto your network. And because nobody else is on your network, like the big three have today, you have virtually unlimited capacity to add client devices to your network, whether these are Wi-Fi enabled uh, cameras out there on your campus, whether these are Wi-Fi enabled routers or LTE enabled routers out there on campus, or whether those are LTE enabled Chromebooks, cell phones, the list goes on and on. You can support all of this concurrently without fear that if some big community event is going on on or near your campus, that there might be a very large drag on that traditional public uh, wireless network being offered again by the big three today. So the capacity is huge, uh, nearly unlimited for PCN as far as what would standardly touch that network at a controller level by the administration behind that private cellular network at the school's campus. Lastly, control. We touched about this with capacity. The control really allows uh, that unlimited capacity. So what we mean is that uh, PCN often allows what's called micro slicing. And through micro slicing, you really get a lot of control over how traffic behaves on your network. Not only can you allow certain devices at a group level or individual onto your private cellular network, but you can also keep a lot of devices that are unwanted out and non-visible to your cellular network. Also, you can tweak policies and set policies through a cloud controlled software platform to prioritize certain types of traffic. For example, if you know on Friday night, you have Friday night lights for football games, and you know that sports broadcasting is going to be a paramount mission critical use case for you up there in the press box or down on the field, then you can set a policy that completely prioritizes whatever uh, streaming device you have that is PCN enabled with a PCN SIM card down there. And so an unparalleled amount of bandwidth is being funneled to that specific application. It could be the same thing for, let's say, uh, 11th grade LT enabled Chromebooks when they're doing statewide mandated testing. So you can see that you can tweak different policies and control the general emphasis of traffic and bandwidth on your network all thanks to PCN and its unique policy software-based infrastructure that, again, you control at the customer level, having invested in the network on your campus. So this is a general um, diagram of how PCN works at a Visio level. So one thing I will say that this doesn't do the greatest job of demonstrating is it all starts with a spectrum access software or a license, if you will. That's really going to allow you to be authorized to get on that band 48 frequency between that 3550 and 3700 megahertz. That allows you access and once you deploy some small cells, we can generally think of them as base stations for PCN, or we can think about them as access points for PCN. Bottom line, if you've ever seen a public carrier's microcell on a tall building, a water tower, et cetera, these are much the same idea. These are specialized receivers that are going to harness that band 48 frequency and then broadcast that out to any number of devices uh, that are sitting uh, behind those. So when we see the devices there on the left-hand side, we talk about sensors in terms of HVAC, 
terms of temperature monitoring, a whole host of thing. We see machines like cameras and maybe some automation robotics. We see cell phones, of course, and other types of mobile devices such as laptops that can all access and benefit from private cellular networks. And then there on the right-hand side, that's where a lot of that uh, policy tweaking happens to really make your network entirely customizable for your day-to-day -day traffic flow. So again, when we use the example of emphasizing your data streaming device on Friday nights when there are high school football games or middle school football games, that's how that happens there at the core with that network management software allowing you to micro slice your network and prioritize traffic so as a whole there are a couple different ecosystem pieces all the way from the access licensing to the cloud software to the actual small cells that must be deployed either indoor or outdoor across your campus to the devices that are going to receive a pcn sim card and access that network to take advantage of the customization that you've built out and that unparalleled capacity security as a private network. So that wraps up our section overviewing PCN. And now we want to talk about PCN for education. Uh, PLT, again, it's up there, uh, but PLT, PCN, let's look at those as synonyms. Uh, both are very applicable here and both are correct. Uh, we're going to talk about in this section control, we're going to talk about cost savings, and we're going to talk about scalability, specifically what that means for education. Some of this we've touched upon quite heavily, and we're just going to continue to drive it home as a huge advantage for private cellular networks. In terms of control, private operators, or you as the customer that is invested in this private cellular network infrastructure and ecosystem can determine what users connect. So at that software level saying this group of Chromebooks can connect and this group of school issued cell phones to administrators or maintenance staff can connect, but all of our students cellular devices, those are blacklisted. That's offering you that level of control. Again, making sure that only the mission critical endpoints that need this connectivity are actually touching that network to not bog it down, to not slow it down. Added capacity leads to congestion, congestion leads to latency, jitter, reduced overall bandwidth. But it's that control that really dictates how the traffic is prioritized. Again, the sports broadcasting example, that device for Friday night lights and making sure that that broadcast goes out with an unparalleled amount of bandwidth and clarity to your community that can't be there on site watching the game. And also I'll point out from a security standpoint, this is much more secure than enterprise level Wi-Fi, which is generally accessible if a password is found out and disseminated into the community. And if they can get into your Wi-Fi network, they can get behind to the land infrastructure at your campus and potentially do a lot of damage there in terms of what you've built out uh, to keep your campus connected and protected. So keep in mind that this is also a very secure solution, which is completely hidden from any kind of device that does not have a private cellular network SIM card that has been keyed for your organization. Secondly, let's review cost savings. So everybody probably has a cell phone on this presentation today. You partner with a public cellular carrier, so Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile. I myself have a Verizon SIM card and have for a long time on my cell phone. Every month, Verizon charges me a fee to access their public network. And that's justifiable, right? That's expected. So with a private cellular network, because you as the customer is the owner and the operator of that cellular network, you eliminate the monthly cost. You're paying one time for a one, two, three, four, five year spectrum access license. And then that's it. The only other thing you're paying for are the endpoints or small cells that you have to deploy throughout your campus in order to enable private cellular networks. So there's a head in cost, but from an operational viewpoint, you totally eliminate 
that month to month costs for traditional cellular networks on the big three. This is obviously going to result in a huge cost savings for customers from an operational basis, a cost savings that can then be reallocated towards perhaps investing in more Chromebooks that are LT enabled for your students, investing in school issued phones to administrators and also maintenance staff could also affect in LT enabled buses, investing in that infrastructure routers to put on there and then using those to service the community on weekends or service the uh, community during the summer in terms of parking those strategically and offering Wi-Fi. But the bottom line is it's a huge cost saving and that 12 month expense that your district has to budget for year by year by year for your Verizon bill or AT&T bill or T-Mobile bill entirely goes away into a head end cost that again can be uh, up to five years based on what we see that's available in the market today. But the cost saving is a very attractive advantage of private cellular networks. Lastly, let's talk about scalability. I mentioned earlier how private cellular networks generally have about twice the range, if not three times the range of enterprise level Wi-Fi today, meaning in terms of spinning up this network and then getting pervasive coverage, it's much easier and you need much less endpoints than you do with enterprise level access points from any of the major providers today. So it's also flexible and has that extended client capacity due to the lack of congestion that public cellular carriers offer today. But I also want to drive home the fact that a lot of devices today are flexible. So they might primarily run on PCN, as in the case of a school issued cell phone to administrators. You might run off PCN during the school day when you're on school grounds, but then when you roll off school grounds, you're not leaving your cell phone there at the school you're bringing it with you but you might have a backup secondary public cellular carrier card so while they're on campus they're covered by PCN while they're off campus by necessity they can still communicate view that via that school issued asset but again I say that example to drive home that this is a very scalable solution it's very high range it has expanded capacity due to a lack of congestion and honestly it's quite simple to set this up, simpler than you might think. There are a lot of resources out there that can help you map out a heat map, if you will, for total coverage on your campus. And we'll get into that as we drive into the third section here. So what can you do today? We're going to talk about a few things. First, we're going to focus on an endpoint that supports private LTE. Next, we're going to talk about a provider of private LTE infrastructure. Lastly, we're going to talk about next steps, what you can do to learn more and start having these conversations or planning your private cellular network project today. So uh, Cradle Point is probably the global leader in wireless 5G and LTE routing solutions. What you're seeing on the screen there is Cradle Point's R, excuse me, R500 uh, endpoint router device. So that is actually compatible with band 48, which is the private cellular network band running on 3550 to 3700 megahertz. So the modem inside of the R500 supports that spectrum. And so once you plug a private cellular network SIM card into it, it becomes a high capacity, high throughput, completely rugged, Wi Fi enabled endpoint or access point for any number of students or teachers that are teaching from home out in your community. So to give you an example of where this comes into play, there are a number of school districts out there that are early adopters of private cellular networks. They've not only enabled their campuses with PCN, but they've done it at a community level as well throughout a lot of their neighborhoods that are traditionally underserved and don't have equitable Wi-Fi access. So they have put microcells all over the place on campuses in the community and then primarily through CARES funding have issued these R500 devices to individual students. I mentioned they're rugged, so 
unbreakable. Um, but these students have been able to access those private cellular networks at home and have enterprise level Wi-Fi dedicated specifically to virtual learning, distance learning. So that drives at home a, a tangible use case for a school district and how they can overcome that digital divide, right? That was the whole purpose of this. So now that we've talked about everything from what PCN is to the architecture of it and the benefits of it, this really wraps it up in a nice bow of how you can help bridge the digital divide in your community. But Cradle Point R500, great endpoint, a lot of possibility beyond assigning to individual and student teachers or individual students and teachers that are teaching from home and learning from home, but can also be used to support uh, surveillance cameras, security cameras, any kind of sensors that you might have throughout your school district campus or in the community. Then also that sports broadcasting use case we've talked about a few times. So we'll move on to Salona. Salona is actually a very cool company. What Salona has done essentially is they saw the rise of band 48 and private cellular networks and a lot of industry experts in the cellular space, the LTE space, saw the opportunity coming, but they also understood the complexity of what it takes to operate your own cellular network. So what they've done is really consolidated a lot of the individual ecosystem components and made it very easy from a deployment and procurement standpoint for school districts to deploy this type of solution. So when you look at the four things listed on the slide here, really what I'll point out is it's a cloud first architecture. So as an IT staff, as a school district, you have total control based on cloud policies and micro slicing that I mentioned earlier. Not only that, you've got a certain level of AI or machine learning that is learning how you've prioritized your network when your peak network traffic is and is constantly tweaking and refining itself at a policy level to ensure the least amount of latency and the maximum amount of bandwidth to your mission critical applications during any given time. Lastly, all the ingredients you need, we talked about that spectrum access software or that license to even get access to band 48 spectrum. We talked about the cloud management solution. We talked about the small cells or the uh, PCN access points. And we talked about the heat mapping or network planning out there in your community. Well, Salona's done a great thing where they basically bundled every single component you need into two simple SKUs, right? You can choose indoor AP with associated ecosystem requirements like that spectrum access software, or you can pick an outdoor AP. So you can have pervasive coverage both inside your buildings on campus and outside your buildings on campus. Very simple, very easy, wheels up to design of the network, wheels down to deployment and post deployment support of the network. Lastly, no touch operation. It's all cloud backhauled, cloud first architecture. So you don't have to go and plug into anything at a LAN level. You will be able to support those small cells throughout your district from the cloud, uh, drastically reducing man hours spent tweaking and going out to different sites, truck rolls, that kind of thing. So a very enterprise level solution. So next steps, let's talk. We've got two next steps. We've got next steps for schools. So if you're a school with us today, definitely we want to have a conversation about this. We're going to have a slide up here soon about how you can get in contact with us for a free PCN, Private Cellular Network, webinar presentation. And then secondly, uh, for partners, if you're a partner joining us today and you want to figure out a go-to-market strategy around any of your Band 48 compatible endpoints and private cellular networks, by all means, contact us as well. We're happy to have that conversation. So a couple of things we want to point out to our attendees today. Not only are we uh, brushing up on our private cellular network knowledge and becoming experts in that emerging technology, but also we are a 5G and LTE enablement company. So uh, more or less everything cellular from a private level all the way to a public 4G LTE or 5G level. Uh, we host webinars frequently uh, discussing emerging technologies, emerging solutions, and use cases and innovations that might make sense in your deployment environment as a customer 
to, as a customer today. We're always posting articles on our social media. So I encourage you to follow us primarily on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. And then lastly, we believe that staying connected is everything. We've got a proven process that we want to sit down with you, connect, understand your need, understand your pain points, and ultimately deploy the right solution each and every time. We take that very seriously here at RCN. So again, if you'd like to have a consultation with us, then here is the information for that one-on-one -on -one PCN consultation. Um, we do personalized demos. If you decide you'd like to do a demo, we obviously have assets that can help plan your proof of concept or your deployment environment and coverage map. Also discuss your goals and needs, leave with that need as we like to say here at RCN. Uh, there's our main office number right there, the 865-293 number. Also my information there on the right, if you would like to get in contact with me directly, by all means, shoot me an email or give me a shout there at my direct line or my cell phone. So yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us and thank you Reed for sharing your knowledge uh, of this exciting solution with us. Yeah, absolutely Mark. Just wanna thank everybody for spending your time with us today and we'll see you on the next webinar. We appreciate it.